people looking for work, work-life balance? Because I know that's a word that keeps getting shown and yeah. presented, and yeah. it's a very annoying word for me. We're sitting downstairs, we're having cigars in the, in the Whirlpool, and I asked you, PBD, how do you run two companies as a full-time CEO for both? And I think you had a very interesting answer. I think a lot of viewers of Seven Figure Squad you know, would like to hear, because a lot of people are thinking, well, if I'm gonna start a business on a part-time basis, I got a full-time job, and I got a part-time yeah. business. I mean, where do I, when do I stop working? Yeah, so it's, I work two full-time schedules is what I do. And, and, and the best way to figure that part out is it, always ask people that work with somebody. Like for me to learn about how you are, is I gotta talk to your coordinator, your, your, I gotta talk to your assistant, I gotta talk to yeah. your family, I gotta talk to your kids, I gotta talk to your wife, to really learn at what pace you go, right? Okay. To really learn what pace you know, I go. You gotta go see what the office looks like, you gotta see the scheduling, you gotta see Monday through Saturday, through Sunday, you gotta see that scheduling. I run two companies, it's not because, pe- I don't recommend people doing that. Yeah. It's gotta be an obsession thing, for me it's an obsession thing, I sure. love both of them, they're both kind of intertwined yet at the same time separated. You, 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 you have to be extremely disciplined on both to run them. I don't recommend people doing it too early. My suggestion is to drag out your 100% obsession into one thing for as long as possible because nothing's gonna do better than 100% into one thing. And then gradually go from 90, 10, to 80, 20, to 70, 30, but up until the very end, put all your energy and everything you got into one thing. thing. Andrew Carnegie once said the following thing. He said, put all your eggs in one basket. Just make sure nobody can touch it and they don't fall. So his idea wasn't never put all your eggs in one basket. His idea was put it all in the same basket and go all in in this one thing, right? That's more my philosophy than it is about, you know, the other way of running them. So, people, the reality is, even if you're going from a full-time career job yeah. to starting a part-time business, there requires a lot of heavy lifting and bending. Because I can't imagine at, at the beginning of PHP and either or VT, that was a lot of early success on. And what what kept you going? What what was like? Okay, we're onto something. We're onto something. We keep pursuing this. Yeah, you you know, like when you walk into a room and nobody yet, yet respects you, <laughs> or nobody validates you. You just kind of no one's even talking to you in the room, right? Yeah. But deep down inside, you're like, what, what, how come nobody, none of you guys talk to me? Do you realize how hard I'm gonna work to get the respect, like I'm gonna bust, I belong in this room. If you really fully have that mindset of I belong in this room, it's a very frustrating phase you're gonna go through is because you have to earn the right yeah. to, for yeah. others to say you belong in this room. Until you do that, nobody cares yeah. that you're a great speaker, you've read all these books, nobody cares. The only thing that room cares about is results. If you haven't had the results, nobody cares. So the four things, remember, I was a guy that said, I'm gonna outwork everybody. And I'm gonna outwork every one of my competitors. It ain't enough. Then I said, I'm gonna out improve everybody. Reading all the books, it ain't enough. Then I said, I'm gonna out strategize because I would go against a couple of the competitors that had better strategies than me. I said, I'm gonna out strategize. This comes later. This takes a while to come. So when you're newer, you don't yet have all the strategies, right? Like when Kobe was on Jordan and he's guarding Jordan, he says, Hey, Jordan, what do you do with the footwork with this? He says, just use the hips and feel defense based on the hips. And Kobe's like, wow, I never thought about that before. That's a strategy. That you're not going to get that in the first year of playing basketball. That comes. And then obviously, last but not least, is who can last the longest. <laughs> and that is the most annoying, intimidating thing about competition because we're not really going to know who the players are for two decades. Who the hell has patience for two decades? Yeah. Very few people. So, gotcha. yeah, you eventually, if, you get, if you're willing to outwork, out, improve, out, strategize, out, last, eventually you're going to get the credit you, des- you deserve. A lot of viewers on Sam Fear Squad are also faith based. Uh, and, and obviously, uh, the thought process of making a million dollars, for some of them, they've been given this narrative in church that, you know, to be rich, to be wealthy, you know, it's easy for a camel to go to the eye of a needle yep. and a rich man to get into heaven. Yep. So, a lot of them feel that I shouldn't become wealthy. And yeah. you're, you're, for a large part of your life, you're an atheist. And yeah, since the uh, large part of uh, PHP was a, this pastor named Pastor Dudley yeah. Rutherford, who, who immensely blessed uh, you know, your, your business endeavors, can you talk to us about your faith? Yeah, no question about it. So I remember one time I sat down with Dudley and I said, Dudley, listen, I'm going through this struggle, the same thing you just said right now. I was 24, 25 years old. And I said, man, do I, do I go become a pastor? Do I go do this? What am I supposed to do? I want to serve my purpose the right way. He says, no, he says, God chooses people to go through different endeavors to make their own impact. Yours is business, you stick to business. Going at the highest level, just remember to not forget and give praise to the man upstairs because without him. So, yeah. you know, to me, I, I think sometimes the, if, you, if you allow the enemy 
Say the enemy doesn't believe in what you believe in, but the enemy has more resources than you. He can make a bigger impact than you can. Say you got a better vision, say you got a better cause than the enemy does, but you don't want to go out there and make money. You can't really make an impact. But if you got the money, yeah. you go work your tail off and you make whatever that number is going to be for you, the 100 grand, a million, 10 million, a billion, whatever the number may be for you that you want to go get, you're able to do more with resources. Simple as that. There's nothing else to it. If you have a great vision, if your cause is solid, if the values and principles you follow as a Christian man is solid, you need resources to grow it. And those resources that we use today is the dollar, it's money. So it's a waste to not use your talents that God's given you to go out there and do something big with it. It's a waste of time if you don't do it. You know, oftentimes we talk about recreation, you know, uh, getting yourself to the next level in your life. So if somebody's watching this right now and they say, okay, PBD, I want to take my life to the next level, uh, what are some of the basic uh, uh, fundamentals you'd be looking for to recreate themselves so that they can control their cash flow? How can they make sure they're financially set and squared away for the next year ahead? Yeah, you, you know, everybody goes into a new year and they say, oh, I got big goals, I'm going to do big things, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I always ask the question, what's different about you this year than last year? Tell me. <laughs> and it's always like, well, I'm just more serious. Tell me why. I, I'm just more dedicated. Tell me why. I'm just so committed. I, I, explain to me why, right? The yeah. biggest thing is you don't want to go into a new year being the same person you were. It's almost like going to a party and you haven't seen your friends and family for the last six months, okay? The best compliments your friends and family are going to give you is what? I don't recognize you anymore. Something's changed about you. What's up with your, uh, your walk? The, the words you use, and I'm not accustomed to that. That's a compliment. Versus people see you six months later, you're the same exact person. You haven't changed at all. Yeah. You're still using the same language. You're still using the same stuff. Everything's still the same. You ain't changing. You want the greatest compliment in the world is where the people close to you say, I don't recognize you anymore. The way you do that, there's a logical side to it. There's an emotional, emotional side to it. The logical side is skill set, having a plan, supporting cast, having the right systems, that's all logical. The emotional side is having the right enemy, you know, having the right mission, being clear about the vision, having the strong willpower. You're working on your willpower where typically in 2021, when something bad would happen, you would have a setback. You'd be so weak and out of it for two or three weeks. You know, you'd lose momentum. These are small, subtle things that you have to pay attention to to work on yourself going into a new year. Emotional and logical, but it's got to be changes where people say, I don't recognize you anymore. That was a killer building block diagram that you shared with us. Yeah, the play. 12 building blocks, yeah. yeah. And by the way, it's, it's been an honor and a pleasure to be mentored by you and coached by you my in man. many aspects of my life. You're the easiest guy to ever work with. <laughs> you and Sheena, the easiest two people I've ever worked with. Praise the Lord. We hope to continue to earn that.